Okay, first principles. What are the underlying assumptions on which this report is based? Staff have stated that they're acting on the basis of council priorities. This city's job is to manage development and not to promote development. It's the UDI's job to promote the housing production industry. It's the Board of Trade's job to promote business. It is the city's job to manage the process in the best interests of its residents. Developers are not partners or stakeholders, and yet the city is laser focused on working with these stakeholders and partners previously described as special interests for their benefit. The rationale appears to be that there is a shortage of housing and a deficit in housing production. On what evidence is this based? Certainly not actual housing data. Staff have provided memos that do not include even the most basic data, such as what development is in the pipeline and zoned capacity. And I am shocked the council has not fought harder to obtain reliable data towards evidence-based policies as opposed to aspiration. This report and its recommendations allow staff to ignore historical policy in the interest of fast-tracking development. So why circumvent policy and fast-track development? To produce more supply and generate more revenue to the city through the planning department. The city's business and financial model was changed a decade ago to regularize development revenue to fund its council priorities. So why the rush? We need the money. The report suggests allow, allowing spot rezoning proposals to go forward for consideration, even if they do not conform to any policy that will allow it. This would undermine all community plans and, planning, and make planning policy meaningless. This will undermine all community trust in the planning process it will allow large developments to go towards forward in the Broadway corridor, for example, before the planning is complete and override the interim rezoning policy to avoid speculation. It would set huge precedents of a scale in advance of the Vancouver plan and override decades of community plans that took a lot of city and community resources. There is nothing in this change of policy that would in any way increase affordability. It will do the opposite, add speculation and add a lot of staff, council and public time to deal with projects that should never go forward for spot rezonings in the first place. BC assessment has shown that the aggregate land value has grown exponentially over the last decade, well in excess of pace of change. Our relentless rezoning is only exacerbating land inflation. This policy is adopted and it looks like it will, Council will relinquish more of its decision-making policy, not less, to a staff that has already taken many liberties, in my opinion. Most concerningly, due to the difference in power and influence between staff and the development industry on one side and residents on the other side, I fear this will stifle and hamstring participation in our civic democracy even further. In the next election, I hope voters will pay attention to what I consider a travesty in this report. 